I'm City Councilman and Attorney J.B. Smiley Jr. and you're watching Live at Nine. On this Monday, October 14th, welcome to Live at 9, where Memphis comes alive. Along with your top news, weather with Max Claypool and trending topics in Coffee with Corey, here's a look at our guest lineup. Today, educational psychologist Dr. K is joining us to break down the signs of ADHD in kids and give us practical tips to help our kids thrive this school year. Plus, Queen of Memphis Radio Bev Johnson is with us to talk about the Souls to the Polls campaign and since this legend is here, we have a couple of questions to ask her about her amazing journey and her passion for keeping Memphis engaged. Next, Memphis is in the spotlight on the college tour. Here from University of Memphis VP of Student Affairs, Melinda Carlson, and two of the stars about how they're capturing the true spirit of the Tiger experience on Amazon Prime and their TV show there that happens all at the U of M. Also, Trina Clemens of the African Place is going to share how you can get in on their 20 25th anniversary of celebrating culture with the African Place Festival. And we are getting our hands sticky in the sweet world of honey with the T Bar 901 beekeeping expert, Tatile Nai Amke. Now, she's going to show us a demo on a honeycomb cutting and share the secrets behind your favorite natural sweetener and her tea universe. So grab a morning tea cake and join us for the next hour. But first, be sure to record the show so you never miss an episode and connect with us online at our website, live at nine TV. That's also our handle on social media. And now topping our news here at nine efforts continue to prepare Shelby County residents for the upcoming property reappraisal process. The Shelby County Assessor's Office must reappraise properties every four years and the next go round is this coming January. To make sure that homeowners are aware of what is ahead, Assessor of Property Melvin Burgess will hold another meeting to educate the public later today. The Let's Talk Reappraisal Forum will take place at the Baker Community Center on Church Street in Millington. This meeting begins 4.30 today and homeowners, business owners, investors, and the general public are all encouraged to attend. Also happening today, Shelby County Commissioners are expected to consider three ordinances aimed at changing procedures over a juvenile court. Now the first ordinance requests the sheriff provide rehab services to individuals in the juvenile justice system the second says a juvenile court judge must provide offenders and their caregivers written notice of expungement rights. The third measure would require legal representation and recording for minors during interrogations. Now, meanwhile, all hearings inside juvenile court remain virtual for the foreseeable future. Months after the facility on Adams Avenue closed to the public, in-person hearings were set to resume today, but the court says Shelby County Sheriff Floyd Bonner denied a request to transport youth to court because of a staffing shortage. So a lot going on there. We'll keep up with it. Our week is off to a much cooler start across the greater Memphis area. Weather expert Max Claypool here with a first look at our forecast on this Monday morning. Max, I almost went back in and got a light jacket, but then I said, wait, it's going gonna, it's gonna to warm up a little bit. It feels like fall out there. Absolutely. It's cool this morning and just wait for the next couple of mornings. It's going to be uh, in the 40s, possibly even the 30s once we get to the middle of the week. So as of right now, just north winds coming in, bringing in that cooler air as we take a live look at Shelby Farms, where you can see these trees are moving a little bit. So definitely a bit of a brisk breeze out there with Temperatures in the upper 50s in the city. If you're just up to the north, places like Blytheville and Dyersburg are in the low to mid to upper 50s. And so that cool air that's up to our north is going to keep on coming in. 48 in St. Louis, 48 in Springfield. And some of those lower temperatures are the ones that are going to be on the way that we're going to experience midweek. Temperatures are above below average across a good portion of the country, blue representing below average temperatures, red representing above average temperatures. And really this entire week, it's not gonna be uh, until the weekend that warmer air slides in. You can see here 68 today, 66 tomorrow, 62 on Wednesday. Wednesday is gonna be the chilliest day of the week with overnight lows Wednesday morning in the 30s. And then we'll start to warm up by the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The pattern kind of breaks down. So at that point, we'll climb up to the mid-70s. 
All right, thank you so much. School is in session, and while many parents are getting updates on classwork through progress reports and report cards, they may also be learning about their kids' behaviors while at school. According to the CDC, an estimated 7 million U.S. children ages 3 to 17 have ever been diagnosed with ADHD. Educational psychologist Dr. Karen Streeter, Dr. K, is here this morning with some insights for parents and guardians who may have questions but not know where to start. Welcome back, Dr. K. How you Thank doing? Thank you. I'm good. How are you this morning? Well, I'm like, you know, I always have like all <laughs> the thoughts all the time all, all over uh -huh. the place. And exactly. so I'm wondering if I need to be di diagnosed this morning. <laughs> all of us feel like we have all of the symptoms all the time, uh -huh. but it's about whether or not it actually affects your life to mm -hmm. the point where you really have problems functioning. What is ADHD? Well, ADHD is a neurological condition and it affects the way people are able to pay attention, um, behave, as well as stay focused and organized. Oh, wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so talk about some of the misconceptions. Yes. Yeah. So number one, people feel like it, kids can grow out of it. You do not grow out okay. of it. Okay. It's a trait. Like wiring. Just, yes, it is the way your brain is wired. Some people have blue eyes, some people have green eyes, some people have ADHD, and some people don't. The next thing is people feel like um, the person who has ADHD can control it. Mm. Like, oh, they're just bad or they're just lazy when really it's the way their brain operates. Mm. So imagine having honey on your body and ants crawling all over the honey. Right. That's how it feels. Oh my goodness. So can you control that? No, I'm literally <laughs> going to be running down the street like streaking. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then the third one is people feel like they can discipline somebody out of ADHD. Oh my goodness. Have you ever, ever heard like, oh, they just need a good spanking. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That does not work. Uh, so That does not work at all. And, and some of the signs and, and let's do mm -hmm. your demonstration. Yes, yes. So let's, let's look at our little quiz for today. Oh, it's boy. yes or Here no. And this is some of the signs. <laughs> so think about it very closely. And you may think about yourself your child or someone you love. So the first one is often has trouble paying attention to details or makes careless mistakes in work or activities. Yes or no? It, it's very, it's no. I mean, because yeah. I'm so like afraid. Yeah, of, like very detail yeah, oriented. Like, uh, yeah, that's probably a little anxiety. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so number two is frequently seems to not listen when spoken to directly. Mm. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> And that's and bad. Like, what? What? Because people are speaking like, to me all the time. I, I really know. have to make myself focus in. So that's one for me, none for you. <laughs> Number three, often has difficulty completing tasks or following through on instructions. I I'm going to say yeah, no. I'm like fixed a little yes, bit. It's like, are you little, there? Hello? Yes, are you exactly. Still? Yeah, so. I got you on that one. Oh. Okay. Often acts without thinking, interrupting conversations, or intruding on others. Uh, we always have at least <laughs> one that goes together. I will blurt out when people are talking all the time. Okay, frequently fidgets or is unable to stay seated in situations where it is expected. I wish, uh, you know, because they say you lose weight when you do that. I know. So I wish I would like a little bit more. I fidget constantly. Right, my what, my what foot is mean? always moving. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, it's, so it's like that little bit of that little squirmy kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have that. So, oh. yeah. So if you have three or more of those, does not mean that you have ADHD. Oh, okay. But if it bothers you, you should go and speak with a doctor because it is a medical condition. Wow. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's one of the steps. Um, but it, it's almost like you, you have to. Oh, right? yes. You, you can't just ignore it. Yes. So what happens is oftentimes what, what I find is that um, children may be diagnosed very young and usually you see the symptoms prior to the age of 12. Mm. So a lot of times kids will go to school and about now teachers start sending notes home saying, you know, Johnny is out of his seat. He's constantly blurting out. He, you know, has his emotions are, are not regulated. So the, the parent may take them to the doctor. They may do something like put them on medication. Yeah, I was wondering, is that the mm -hmm. only thing? No, that is not the only okay. thing. In fact, we're going to talk about some of the techniques okay. in just a few minutes. Let's do that. But one, one of the good ways to handle it is through medication. Mm -hmm. And not every kid can take medicine, but if they can, 
it changes their life. I wish we so, had more time. What, yeah. what, let's, let's whip through the non-medications. Okay, so some of the non-medication things are for fidgeting, you can use a squeezy ball. Oh. You can, yes, I love a little timer. Uh -huh. I love this old fashioned timer so that they can see the passage of time uh -huh. as they are moving through activities. You can use bubbles for breathing. I can't get the little thing out, but yeah. breathe in, breathe out and the bubbles come out. And then also use a daily uh, planner to help them stay organized. Right, and that visual clock. Thank you yes. so much You're for this. You're welcome. I'm, I, I thought I had ADHD and I just <laughs> you was undiagnosed. You do not, you do not. Most okay. of us don't, but about 5% of us do. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. K. Okay. Dr. K, that's her information if you want yes. to reach out. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, thank you. <laughs> Straight ahead, we're less than a month away from a major election. Learn how some organizations are working nonpartisan ways to get more souls to the polls this November. That's coming up on Live at Nine. Welcome back to Live at 9. Thanks for staying with us. Weather expert Max Claypool with a look at what's coming ahead this week. Hey, Max. Hey, Kanji. So, yeah, we it, it fall is here. It is uh, basically, yeah, what the theme of this forecast is going to be. North winds coming in right now, and those north winds are helping to transport the cool air into the Mid-South. Here's a live look at Shelby Farms where you can see the breeze, a bit of a breeze here rustling the trees, clear skies, temperatures in the upper 50s here in Memphis, up to the north, Blytheville, Dyersburg in the mid to upper 50s as well. And if you look way up to the north, Kansas City, St. Louis, notice those temperatures in the 40s right now, that air is on the way. So as cool as it is this morning, even cooler air is gonna be working its way down. Dew points in the 30s, so basically no moisture in the air. There's a look at that cold front, those north winds and the cool air spilling into the Mid-South. High pressure too, keeping our skies clear, keeping us sunny, keeping our dew points down. And so it's gonna be crisp, cool and dry out here over the next week or so. There's a look at that cold front again. Below average temperatures are in blue, above average temperatures are in red. And as you can see, pretty much the entire eastern half of the country is under a below average temperatures as that front works its way through and that Canadian air moves down to the south. Now this pattern eventually breaks down next weekend. You can see this high pressure off to the west, but then that moves to the east by the end of the week and into the weekend. And so we flip our winds out of the south. We bring that warmer air into the mid-south. And so the weekend we'll see highs climb back up into the mid-70s. 
Before that, though, we could see some frost and possibly even a freeze this week. Wednesday morning and Thursday morning is the best chance of that with high temperatures in or sorry, low temperatures in the uh, 30s potentially in spot. So it's going to be a cold morning then for sure. We're going to have a number of cold mornings this week. Now, our daytime highs, though, total, you know, are going to be fantastic. The total opposite of uh, that 68 degrees on Monday, 66 on Tuesday, 62 on Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be a chilly day. The fact that it's only going to be 62 means that for a lot of the day, we're going to be in the 50s as uh, we warm up to that high temperature. And then eventually we climb back up for the weekend. Your muggy meter is going to be bottomed out. So nothing in terms of any humidity. You don't have to uh, really think about humidity this time of year. Here's a look at your seven day forecast with temperatures in the 60s over the next week. Those overnight lows in the 30s and 40s before we climb back up next weekend, 74 Saturday, 75 on Sunday and still plenty of sunshine. No rain in this forecast, not a lot of clouds in this forecast. So uh, overall, I think a very nice forecast for this week. Kanji. All right, Max. Early voting in Shelby County kicks off later this week ahead of the November 5th election. To raise awareness, organizers have put together a Souls to the Polls event in Whitehaven. To learn more, we are live with the queen of talk herself, Tennessee Radio Hall of Famer Bev Johnson. That's actually the real story. <laughs> Bev is on the red couch. Hi. Hi, how are you? I am so honored to sit next to you. I'm so honored to sit next to you. I said it first. Okay, so wait, let's get to this. So you are a voice of the community for decades. What made you uh, want to join the Souls to the Polls project? One of the reasons is it, it's a station event, WDIA. Also, we are celebrating Kanjiar. We will be 76 years old, wow. WDIA. So one of the things to celebrate our anniversary thought, how do we get people to the polls? And so people love music. Mm -hmm. So we decided to have a big concert in celebration of our anniversary, WDIA, and get people to go to the polls to vote. Wow, so what's gonna happen that day? We're gonna be at Southwick Mall on October 19th. From noon to four, we're gonna have a array of guests, rhythm and blues and gospel. We are going to have Willie Clayton, the Barkays, Miss Jody, Chick Rogers, Calvin Richardson, the Echonairs, uh, Daryl Pettis. We're going to jam. But also, the Tennessee Voter Project is there, and they're going to transport people to go vote because it er will be early voting. Right. And so um, I, I do always like to point out this is a nonpartisan event. Why do you think it's important? Uh, no matter what uh, party you're in, to, to go to the polls? It is very important because this is our country, democracy, and you need to use your voice to vote. And I always say this, Kanji, if our ancestors could fight to go through all kinds of struggle and pain to try to vote, why can't we go vote? So those people who are registered, we want you to go to the polls to vote, whoever you choose, but go vote. It's important. You need your voice heard. And if you want things to change, you use your voice and your vote. Well, speaking of voice, while you're here, please tell people how long you've been in radio. Oh, my gosh. I have been in radio for 48 years years. Wow. Okay. It, <laughs> just, just tell me. Wait what? a minute. And, oh, wait. And, and WDIA for 41. So, wow. So you just and been doing the Bev Johnson show for 37. And the hours that people can watch you? 11 to 1, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Now, if you could just, uh, is there any guiding principle that you have followed that helped you to, to just reach this huge milestone? You're almost 50 years in. Oh, yeah. The one thing that I think, Kanji, is what my grandmother always told me. Treat people the way you want to be treated. So I treat my listeners like I want to be treated. And as you treat yourself, you'll treat others. All right, so love thyself because we love Bev. She loves us. So now we know you love yourself. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Bev Johnson. Um, such an honor. You're such a legend and such a role model and someone that I, you know, I look up to greatly. So thank you. Thank you for having me.
All right, souls to the polls, everybody. Go to the polls. <laughs> Honey is the buzzword of the day here on Live at Nine. Coming up, meet the local entrepreneur working with the sweeter side of Mother Nature. She's a beekeeper and more and much more. That's next. They've been around for about 30 million years and pollinate one third of the world's food. We're talking about honeybees and joining us for this chat, local business owner and beekeeper, Tatile Nyam K. Thank you so much for coming in the T-Bar 901. Thank you guys for having me. Okay, this is quite the setup. We even have your beekeeper outfit here that we're gonna show. How did you get started with beekeeping and tea? Yeah, so it started in college. I just kind of went down a wormhole. <laughs> oh, yes. Reading about different teas and saw how they could be beneficial to people as far as their health. And then I got into beekeeping, found a mentor and now we're here. A mentor is like, hey, I need a beekeeper mentor. Yeah. And they appear, but it's true, they do. And you have your beekeeper outfit here. Mm -hmm. um, what does the honey harvesting process actually look like? We have some video too. Okay. Uh, yeah, showing you. Sure, so I'll give you the very short <laughs> version of what that looks like. Um, you'll suit up, you definitely want to have on their protective gear mm -hmm. or they will get you okay you'll get got um mm -hmm. you want to keep them fed you want to make sure they're healthy with different treatments and things what do they eat do they eat the honey i mean i'm so embarrassed they but, do they okay. eat honey um sometimes in the winter they may eat sugar water if they're not okay. producing enough honey okay um but when they do produce that honey you harvest it you cut off the beeswax on top you put it in this big machine called an extractor uh -huh. it spins the comb around really fast mm -hmm. and then the honey just oozes out into a little jar and that smoke is to just kind of lull them. It's like catnip. Yes, it kind of <laughs> calms them. That particular hive right there, uh -huh. I hate to say it, but that's our most aggressive hive, <laughs> so they need the most smoke. <laughs> they probably have like one queen bee in there who's mm -hmm. like, oh, you're not coming up in here. Yes. Um, but okay, but then they can continue to make the honey after that honey is extracted. Exactly. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Okay. Uh, you have a honeycomb. Yes, ma'am. And you have some of your products. Well, tell me what you make with the honey. Sure, so we make a lot of different things with the honey. 
We'll start over here with this turmeric soap. Mm. When I say it's like a $300 facial <laughs> in a bar, the honey makes your skin look amazing. We, of course, have the original raw honey. We also make sea moss gels, elderberry syrups as well with the honey, so it's really versatile. Okay, what's happening here? So we're gonna do a little demo. Okay. And we have this honeycomb here, and it's like raw state. It's a little sticky. Yeah. So we're gonna have we, to. We expected that. We knew that was gonna happen. We're gonna work with this. Okay. There we go. Hope they can see that. Nice, big, juicy honeycomb. Should I put a glove on and, and, and just be able to be your Vanna, Vanna oh, Black? You are so sweet. Uh, no, you. And so, let me get this one on as well. Put the gloves on. Uh-huh. All right. We'll get a knife, usually, if we're out in the field. Can you see that, guys? <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Thank you, thank you. I can see all the little, so their little bodies just hang out in, in all these little. Yes. Yeah, I mean, how do they create, sorry, I'm just. It's okay. It's, it's okay. just, they're so. Um, Intricate. Uh, yeah, and also just so well made. Like, they look very, very, uh, like they were cut almost. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they actually kind of build those mm -hmm. combs. Okay, yeah. I've just never paid attention. So they okay, do. let's let's go. And they protect their golden treasure mm -hmm. with this little layer out here <gasps> called beeswax. Oh, mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. And in the field, this would be like a hot electric knife. And we would mm -hmm. cut off that top layer of beeswax and then get to the honey. Okay. But for this demo, we we'll just cut a little bit. Oh wow, it's it's kind of hard. Uh huh. It's that um that beeswax on top. Gotcha. Oh, I see. Oh. And then when you do put it into the jar, it, it starts to ooze out. It does. Okay. Oh, wow. It's yeah. a little sticky, so let's like, there we go. Right. We'll get a little bit into this jar here. Push that down. And so you end up filling these, mm -hmm. and then you also, um, or just extract just the honey. We um, extract oh. the honey, and then sometimes we'll harvest the entire comb to put inside of the jars. Really? And then mm -hmm. what do you do with that? What do we do with the honey? Yeah, once you, you're harvesting, mm -hmm. what does that do? The comb inside of the honey? Mm -hmm. Well, it has a lot of different health benefits. Um, some people like it because it looks really cool. <laughs> but it's also really good for your immune system. It's antibacterial. The wax is antiviral. It's great for your skin. And bees help the ecosystem as we, you know, and then I do want to ask how people can get in contact with you. Thank you. Yes, they do help the um, ecosystem, very much so. And the ways people can get in contact with us, we have a website, the tbar901.com. Mm -hmm. We also have a phone number mm -hmm. at, not at, excuse me, 901-831-4501. <laughs> and then our email is the tbar901 at gmail.com. All right, thank you so much. And this is natural local honey and, and that's so, for you ah jenna jenna <laughs> we have honey for our tea all right <laughs> she said woo, woo. all right this is so exciting thank you so much and i love just seeing what you're doing in our community and helping the bees um help our um, ecosystem to exist yes so it's very critical mm -hmm. so we need more honey bees all right, yes, thank you. you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, coming up, the U of M goes Hollywood. Coming up, a popular Amazon Prime show will showcase life on the Memphis College campus. And we have all the details and the cast members, some of them, next.
We're back on Live at 9. Now, here's Kanji. The University of Memphis joins a unique group of institutions later this week being featured in the college tour when Amazon Prime Video streams its 12th season. To learn more about the show and some of the participants, we are live with VP of Student Affairs at the U of M, Melinda Carlson, along with cast members Caleb Sugg and Susie Perry. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having us. Yes, we have some stars here. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> Melinda, what is the college tour and how did the U of M become part of this? Yeah, so the college tour features colleges and universities across the country and we we were fortunate enough that they reached out to us and we really seized the opportunity to, to feature the best and brightest at the university. Okay, so Caleb, tell us what happened. Like, what did they want from you guys and what did they put on uh, online now? It was really cool. I mean, they really just wanted everybody's authentic experience, you know, our experience with the U of M. Me being an alum, Susie being a student, it was really fun to just um, have them kind of learn from your mouth what your experience was like, what your majors were, and what, uh, how the, M the U of M really impacted you at the end of the day. And so when we got on campus um, to actually shoot it, they kind of helped us with our script and we did these little stand-ups so we could kind of um, tell the viewers how we experienced U of M through our mouths. And then they had so many cool like B-roll and uh, footage cutaways to just show, give us like a, uh, a first-hand view of what it was like to be in school with us. So it was, it was really fun. And now you know the term B-roll. Um, so, okay, Susie, just uh, talk about what it was like to have cameras coming around with you, and and then also, um, what are some of the things that happened? So it was definitely really nerve-wracking. <laughs> I shot mine at like it was either 7:30 in the morning or 8 in the morning, which was really considerate of them because I just had classes throughout the rest of the week, and they like went around my time that I could film and they just went really out of their way and having cameras everywhere, I was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't, I could not say my lines. It Can took you me date? 17. Can you date? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't want anyone, you, and I'm just, that was. Yeah, I would be know. like, thank y'all, hey Nick, when I was supposed to say, hey Nick, hey, it's Caleb, and I would just be messing up every single line and everything so, that stuff. So how much of it is scripted? Basically, I mean, all of it was pre-scripted. We had to kind of write these paragraphs about ourselves. Oh, before, okay, gotcha. And they kind of helped you with it. But I, I will say, like, once it got up there, and if anything sounded unnatural, if we wanted to rework anything, they were really nice and polite. And they really made you feel like you were a celebrity. They just <laughs> drove you around a golf cart around campus, <laughs> and you got to ask any of your friends to come along with you. So it was just a really fun experience overall. And can you uh, share just what it is that the college tour uh, does and how it uh, pushes the U of M forward for uh, maybe even recruitment or, or you know yeah so i think the college tour did a really incredible job uh, really showing folks the uniqueness of our students mm -hmm. you know there were 10 students featured and they were all so unique and have their own path and their own journey um, to success and, and to thriving on campus and what are some of the majors oh gosh you all probably could yeah do you guys remember some of the yeah. majors covered Ooh, okay so you're Chemistry and business oh. management. Ooh, mm -hmm. Lordy. Yeah. Wait, uh, what? You're a <laughs> major? I am. That is insane. So it's science and, oh my, okay, my brain is blown. And then I was broadcast journalism and oh. the video. That's the voice. I, I already heard that. <laughs> right? Immediately. Right? I mean, when he started talking, I was like, ooh. <laughs> so do you think, uh, what is your ultimate, you know, after, you know, having cameras, do you think it's broadcasting in television or? Radio. A little bit of both. I want to have a television channel and want radio to be a part of that. So, there you go. If you guys could both uh, just say what you think this experience meant and and what you took from it. Ooh, you want to go first? For me, um, the University of Memphis has just given me so much, and my biggest goal with doing this show was giving back to the University of Memphis. So to me, it just was something that I could give back to what has what has given me so much. Wow. Uh, for me, it was kind of like a trip down memory lane. You know, I, I've only been out of school maybe two or three years now, but mm -hmm. uh, just being able to relive the best moments of what being a Tiger was for me and then being able to bring all my friends in to kind of share the experience with me, something something I won't forget anytime soon. Okay, so Amazon Prime, that's the way to see it, right? Yeah. Amazon mm -hmm. Prime, Tubi, it's on YouTube, YouTube. and then uh, um, Apple TV as well. And Boom. Go to the college tour and you will see all the places where it's being distributed. Thank you so much for being a great example for the U of M and you for making this happen. Appreciate oh, it. Thank you for having us. All right. Travel more than 8,000 miles without actually leaving the Bluff City or needing a passport? Find out how one local business does just that and how you can help celebrate the efforts. 25 years in, that's coming up on Live and I.
Uptown Business, celebrating 25 years of bringing authentic African products to Memphis customers. To talk about that milestone and how they plan to recognize it, we are live with owner of the African Place, Trina Clemens, and event organizer, Drew McRaven. Thank you so much for this beautiful display here. And okay, Queen. All right. Thank you. It's so Thank nice you. to meet you. Um, tell me about the inspiration, how this all began, where you said, I have to bring this to Memphis and keep it here. Uh, I started out as a student at Lamoine on College. Um, very intrigued by the um, students coming in from the motherland. Um, their taste was exquisite, and I was intrigued. Uh, fast forward, African April, they um, would present artifacts and clothing, anything you can think of African. When I realized that that is only during April, I said, I want to get this all year long. Mm -hmm. uh, with my interest in it um, and my growing love and passion for it, that is what I did. I started investing in it. And now a quarter of a century. Have mm -hmm. you gone back to look at your roots? What? Where are you from originally? I'm here, from here, right here. But I mean, I'm talking about your uh, African roots. Okay, my African roots, we would go back to Nigeria. Me too. Yes. Me too. Mm -hmm. I'm from the Hausa tribe. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Wow. And so you knew that this was a big time, right? 25 years, and you're organizing an event. Right. For well, the actually, Af she called me. Okay. And told me that she was having the 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. And she said, and I want to do a festival. Mm -hmm. So because I actually, I work with African April as well. I've been working with African April for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so we sat down and we talked and her story really amazed me. Yeah. And we started working on uh, the African Fest fe festival. Um, and once the more that we got into it, then the bigger that it got. And now uh, it's going to be an annual event. We're going to have live entertainment. There's going to be a fashion show. Of course, the artifacts you see here, yes. there's going to be lots of artifacts and different things. But one thing that shocked me, though, Kanji, when I went to her store, it's amazing because she has so many different things from the motherland in there. So, uh, and that's what the event about. It's about celebrating, uh, embracing the culture. Can we talk about some of these pieces yeah. that you have yeah. here? And because I, I was telling you that yeah. I have my statue has the eyes open, and yeah. you said that's actually good. Yeah. Um, what are these? So that's because the song mask, and. Um, what it does, um, they represent protection, mm -hmm. yes, and strength. Mm -hmm. So um, they are ideal for any um, setting, household setting, office, wh whatever you choose, but yeah. And here on the desk, mm -hmm. you also have some uh, products for the body? Yeah, in 2011, uh, Kike Lomo um, product line, it launched, and it has been doing very well. We have the oil sheen, we have the African soap um, for uh, shampoo, and we have the Super Grow. All the products have like a shea butter mm -hmm. base to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. One time I mm -hmm. left it uh, on my, my shea butter on the plane and it melted yeah. and yeah. got yeah. all my yeah. clothes. Yeah. So you just, yeah. just yeah. don't put it in extreme heat you unless you put it. You don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't. <laughs> okay, and tell me what you have over here. And um, I, 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 I'm talking yeah. about the tall one. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So it's still the same. It's, it's oh, a pair, oh. male, female. Interesting. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that beautiful one that's on the floor over uh -huh. there, that I call her Queen Mother Africa. Uh-huh. Yeah, she, um, oh, right. she represents beauty. All right. Uh, so yeah. tell me how we can um, take part in the festival. Are you looking for people to, as vendors, and, and what? What do people need to know? Well, really actually, fast? we do have uh, just a couple of vendor spaces left. Okay. Um, of course, oh, the event okay. is going to be this Saturday, yeah. uh, October 19th. Mm -hmm. It's going to be from 12 noon to 5. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to have entertainment. There's going to be health and wellness workshops uh, as well. Uh, it's going to be spoken word and poetry. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be lots of food as well. So uh, we are looking forward to the city of Memphis coming out you know, helping us in this celebratory moment because for 25 years, mm -hmm. this lady has created something major in city in the city. So we want them to come out and embrace the culture. All right, October 19th, the African Festival, yes, yes. celebrating the African place. Yes, Appreciate you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. Okay.
time for Coffee with Corey, brewed in part by Kroger. Well, how was your weekend, beautiful My lady? My weekend was really nice. Oh. Uh, it was really nice out this, I mean, the weather was a bit hot, so I'm looking forward to the next cooler temperatures for this week. Yeah. That's gonna be really, really nice. It's here. Yeah, it is here. So happy Monday and good morning, everyone. So for starters, the man known as the logo was just inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame for the third time. Of course, uh, Jerry West, who passed away earlier this year, is now the first ever three-time inductee, and he was recognized for his work off of the hardwood this weekend. Well, the Hall of Fame also honored some basketball super fans over the weekend. Hollywood <laughs> stars Billy Crystal, Spike Lee, and Jack Nicholson were added to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame super fan gallery. So Billy Crystal, of course, is a longtime Clippers fan. Spike Lee, as we all know, is a diehard Knicks fan, right? And Nicholson is a L.A. Laker regular attendee. Uh, Philadelphia and Alan Horwitz also is recognized for his love of the game and the 76ers, of course. Uh, the gallery recognizes fans for their passion and reputation within the NBA community. I love when super fans, when you know like, that they're, they're what like, team that they're associated are, with, yes. right? So you also had um, Toronto uh, Raptors mm -hmm. fan over there as well. So I mean, it's a big deal. And Spike Lee is going to be here uh, Thursday for the Freedom Awards. So it's only fitting that we talk about him today. In and you need to have an interview on the red couch with him. Spike, come on, Spike. Make that happen. Get on the red couch. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Okay. And next, uh, Halloween may have gotten a little easier if you love candy and you're a practical person. So Reese's and Kit Kat brands teamed up for the trick or treatable costume. Well, get this. Okay. So the idea stems from concerns from adults who want to hand out candy, but also take their kids trick or treating. I have been there. Well, now you can do both. How about this? The unique design allows you to be the ultimate human candy bowl, <laughs> while also on the go. You can head over to the website Hersheyland.com to get the step-by-step -step directions to create your own costume. They also list tools and items you will need to make the trick or treatable costume. Kit Kat and Reese's also ask that you of course tag them on social media once you have your finished product very interesting right so do you think you it's doable design this you and then you just put so you are basically the candy bowl <laughs> and as you're walking around with your little ones you could also be handing out so it's so a can be, bucket right it's a bucket. and then you have like suspenders but like you just don't want them to slip down your pants like you know like everything's down, gonna be yeah. like yeah I think it's gonna get warm. I, I think they're gonna be it's like, warm. Here's some here. warm chocolate. Oh. Here's some warm chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> then it's not fun at all. I know. And then I you know. have. Then it's like doing laundry. And it's like forever. someone's body heat. It's yeah. not oh, just. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> Never. Sorry. Good. I just like. I no, went I love in it. A little bit too deep. That's the, that's the real. That's a realistic <laughs> concern. It really is. Okay, and finally, okay, fans of Curtis 50 Cent Jackson may already know this, but he has got a special place in the hearts of folks living in Shreveport, Louisiana. Well, the rapper is reportedly downtown Shreveport's second largest property owner, and officials say Jackson could soon own the most real estate in downtown. Well, he opened G Unit Studios, which 50 Cent says he wants it to be more like a Tyler Perry's production company in Atlanta. Well, back in April, the mayor of Shreveport declared the 18th 50 Cent Day. This weekend, the city invites fans to take part in the 50 Cent inspired escape room challenge. Get Rich or Read Trying mm. is inspired by the famous musician's life and career. Teams will have 60 minutes inside the local library to decipher clues and answer riddles to win the escape room will end on November 21st. Wow. How about that? But let me tell you, today is a very special day. Mm. Oh, that's because tell. today is my mom's birthday. <gasps> happy birthday, happy mom. birthday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Today's her birthday. So very happy that we are in the same town now. So I'm going to go take her to lunch for her birthday. That is so, you know what? I think that 50 Cent has the ultimate birthday song. I don't think yes. anybody could ever beat it. Go shorty, it's, it's your birthday. birthday. Uh, and that's to you. <laughs> that was our happy birthday, my happy birthday to you because your daughter would definitely say happy birthday to oh, you. I will later for sure. <laughs> I love it, any cake? Uh, maybe. Huh, okay. Oh yeah, don't tell, don't, don't tell. Same you. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy
We want to thank you for joining us here for Live at 9. Coming up tomorrow on our show, we are talking to Linda Phillips from the Shelby County Election Commission. She's going to help us get prepped for early voting with everything that we need to know. Plus, bringing the past to life with our spooky spirits with the spirits series. Lifestyle expert Alexandra Nolan and I headed down to Elmwood Cemetery. And so we met some spirits and we drank some spirits. So watch as she whips up the perfect cocktail recipes while we hear some fascinating history of some of the souls laid to rest in the historic Elmwood Cemetery. And we're going to be doing that every Tuesday through the month until October is over. So that's going to be really fun for you. Also, University of Memphis cast members. Uh, remember, we saw two today uh, from Amazon Prime's The College Tour. Well, they're going to be joining us in this studio as their episode drops on Amazon Prime. So we're going to have that going on all week. It'll be a lot of fun to meet the cast members. And finally, we got to bring a camera inside of Buster's Butcher, you know, Buster's Liquor. Well, now there is a Buster's Butcher and I've been dying to get in there. So we did. We got the camera in there and they share secrets to take your next meal to another level. They have all the meats, as they say. We want to hear from you. But first, here is a quick message from one of our sponsors. The Medicare annual enrollment period is here again. The following portion of Live at 9 is sponsored by Delta Medicare Benefits Group. And joining us now, President Bobby Jones. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Kanji. Okay, so Delta Benefits does a lot of work with veterans on Medicare, but what type of plans are available for Medicare recipients that are also veterans benefits? Good question, and we love our veterans. We love working with them. Uh, they've earned these benefits, so, so we want to make sure that they know they're available to them. A lot of the veterans don't. We uh, talk to people who are surprised all the time that these benefits are available and available at no cost. So a veteran who is on VA benefits, CHAMP VA, or, or TRICARE, they typically get their coverage from the VA, or in the case of TRICARE, they have their own private doctors. None of that will change with any of these plans. They continue to see the doctors that they see, uh, go to the hospital they want to go to. Uh, this plan, we like to look at it as a backup generator. In case they do want to go to a civilian doctor, then they can now use this plan and go to the doctor. But the beauty of the, of the plan, in addition to it not costing, anything is that they get $140 a month off of their Part B premium. So uh, that's that's huge. I mean, that's almost $1,800 a year that basically they're getting for being in this plan at no cost. Uh, I know TRICARE, for example, doesn't cover dental. Well, this plan will give you each veteran $4,000 a year for dental, $300 a year for glasses, $125 a quarter for over-the-counter benefits, and a free gym membership. So there's lots and lots of things that these plans will do for veterans, specifically designed for our veterans uh, to enhance their benefits. Oh, wow. Who knew? And Delta Benefits also works extensively with Medicare recipients that are on extra help or dual eligible. So what type of plans are available for dual eligible? That's, that's another good one. We have, have lots of good plans for dual eligible. And dual eligible is simply people who are on Medicare and Medicaid at the same time they have to be on both. And if they're on both, we have $290 a month for food cards. We have zero Copays, zero copays in the hospital, zero copays to your doctors, pretty much zero copay across the board. Uh, and again, these plans come at no cost. So uh, if a person is dual eligible or is on extra help, we certainly want to help them along and do everything that we can in order to improve their quality of life. And an extra $290 a month in food will do that for them. So if, if any dual eligible and back to veterans again, if there's anybody out there that are in these categories and want to discuss these further, I highly suggest you give us a call. That's right, and that number has been on the bottom of the screen this entire time, 901-460-7220. Thank you so much for coming in, Bobby. Thank you. All right, and the preceding portion of Live at 9 was sponsored by Delta Medicare Benefits Group. One content segment during Live at 9 today was paid for by Delta Medicare Benefits Group.